Who's ready for an adventure? Good morning. My prayers were answered. We had a uh, nice cold night and the mosquitoes were quite reasonable. I was able to sleep solidly from about 12.30 until around now, which is a bit after sunrise. Uh, so I got about five hours of good sleep. Um, yeah, I haven't had that in a while. That's the best sleep I've had in a, a good bit. So I'm just watching some fish jump out here. I think it's about time I uh, got a quick breakfast in me and got out and did some fishing, see if I can get some food for today. Start to the day. Another pike. to the maxi, and over here, and here, there's a little yellow thing, I'm going to bring this back, see if I can identify that, and if it's edible, I know where to find it. energy this morning. It's a uh, cool morning this morning. I've got my toque and my contact gloves. I've got my long sleeve t-shirt, my fleece sweater, and my uh, reasonably heavy duty rain jacket. This is a good spring and fall jacket. Uh, not what you'd expect for uh, July 19th but it's kept the mosquitoes down, so I'm happy with that. 
Also probably uh, contributing to my clothing choice is the fact that I have virtually no body fat anymore. So uh, I'm not quite as good as keeping myself warm as I once was. I'm uh, a little lighter than I used to be. So this is day 49, the end of week 7. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do my weekly things I miss, things I don't miss about society. Uh, not going to lie, my, uh, or my parents coming to visit and my cousins, uh, they've kind of pulled my mind out of survival again a little bit. Same with what happened with Trevor and Jerry here. I've tried to minimize that, so I'm not going to uh, go on at too much length about this because there are quite a few things I'm missing right now. But uh, generally speaking, I miss home. Um, I miss a nice warm bed, miss nice hot showers, miss easy and convenient and variety and delicious foods. Um, I miss just being able to relax, maybe sit down on the couch, watch TV, have a cup of coffee, uh, miss regular social interactions with friends and family. So uh, there's quite a bit that I miss, but like I said, I don't want to go on too much at length about that. I'm looking forward to getting home, but at the same time, I'm trying not to look forward to it. I'm trying to stay in the, uh, the present situation and focus on what needs to be done. Things... oh... One more thing that I was going to say that I miss is uh, is the internet for the reason of technol or not technology information. Uh, there are so many things that I think that I so many questions that I have. For example, what's the best way to cook cow lily seeds like popcorn? Because that was not a successful attempt earlier this week. Um, wondering about uh, crown land. I've just been thinking about hunting in the fall, and I want to check out a certain area. I want to know if it's crown land or if it's private property. I want to know the best way to cook up an orange bowl eat mushroom. I have all sorts of questions and the information's out there on the internet and I'm unable to access it. So that's one thing that I'm looking forward to getting back, having the, uh, the wealth, of, wealth of knowledge and information that comes with the internet. Uh, things that I don't miss, staying on the note of the internet, is the uh, the distracting, the distraction factor of the internet. I don't. There's a lot that you can use uh, use the internet for, and um, like I said, research and um, information. That's a good thing. Stupid cat videos, uh, pointless games that waste your time, uh, too much social media. It's, it's, it's a good thing and it's a bad thing. Um, but yeah, the, uh, the distraction factor of the internet. I do not miss that. End of social media, end of your phone. Um, I don't miss the noise. I don't miss being inside the majority of the time. Don't miss the hustle and bustle. And the rapid pace, rush, 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 rush. Uh, so yeah, those are the things I miss, things that I don't miss. Um, yeah, it's uh, like I said, end of week seven, ten more days to go, and uh, we're getting there. But got to focus on the here and the now. So I'm going to go head back to camp. I'm a little cold, as I mentioned, so I'm going to make myself some tea. See if I can warm up a little bit and uh, finish processing those cattails that were harvested a couple days ago. I'd like to cook them up today and get that task taken care of out of the way. Um, I think that I have enough rhizomes that I should be able to make them last the remainder of my time here. So that's the job for now. I'll probably fish on the way back because um, I like to eat fish or food. So
I just took a look through my mushrooms book and unfortunately, same old story, couldn't find a match for this one. So I'm not going to eat it. Today's tea is going to be blueberry and strawberry. Uh, I've just added the leaves, and now I'm going to give this a while to steep. I built this fire specifically for the purpose of boiling the water to make the tea. Uh, I'm not going to need the fire for a little while, however I will need it again to, uh, to cook my lunch. Simply for demonstrational purposes, I'm going to go ahead and try out the tinder fungus that I gathered, chaiga. And use that to preserve the fire and uh, that way I won't have to light it fresh once I go to cook my fish for lunch. I will just simply use the tinder fungus to reignite the fire and that will, uh, in reality it will not save me any time, but if this were a situation where I was relying on something like a friction fire to, uh, to get my fires going, that would definitely save me some time and definitely quite a bit of energy as well. So I'll go ahead and do that now. I don't want it to burn, but I do want to make sure that I have a good ember caught on it. It can be a little bit finicky sometimes, so I don't want it to go out prematurely. And that should be good. So I'll put this off to the side, somewhere where it will get some ventilation but hopefully not so much that it burns down too quickly. And I have the smoldering side up so that it will slowly burn down like a candle. And now these will, these uh, embers here will probably gutter out before too long, but before they do I'm going to take another look, check on the fungus, make sure that the ember has caught and held, and if not then I will reignite it. The tea has had a good chance to steep, and I'm ready to give it a try now. It's still a pretty cool morning, it's uh, about 10.30, bit of a north breeze, and uh, <clears throat> I'm happy to have a nice hot drink. And I'm going to go ahead and put the pot on top of what's left of those coals, just to keep it warm. The uh, tinder fungus is burning merrily away. I may even have to um, transfer that over to a larger piece uh, before I go to clean the fish. I'll take a look and check and uh, see how much is left because it's... I did a too good of a job of making sure that it was lit. So there's a, ideally it would be lit in a small spot and it would just burn from there. A great piece of the, uh, the surface is burning and it's burning away faster than I'd like. So like I said I may have to break off another chunk and light that. But uh, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Right now I'm ready to sample the strawberry blueberry tea. Not bad. 
Nothing to write home about though. I would drink it, but it's uh, it's not the sort of thing where I'm going to go out and gather a whole bunch of strawberry and blueberry so that I can bring them home. My um, my favorites and the ones that I do plan on gathering so that I can bring a, a good collection home um, are going to be clover, mint, sweet fern. That's probably about it that I can think of right now. I would bring some wintergreen back, but that doesn't keep. So it has to be had fresh. So yeah, anyways, successful tea. Not bad, not great. I find it's pretty mild. The, uh, the blueberry in particular is, is a very mild tea. And then the strawberry isn't isn't the most robust flavor either. I will point out though that I'm only using the leaves for these teas. I haven't been using the berries because to me uh, if, if there's a berry I'm going to eat it. That's a better application, a better use in a survival situation for sure. Um, however, I imagine if you did use the berries you would get a more flavorful tea and a sweeter tea as well. So that's uh, something to consider. I'm only using the leaves. Dried leaves, but just the leaves. So I'm going to go ahead and enjoy this. Uh, sip on my tea. I might process the remainder of the cattails. And then I will go clean the fish, come back, hopefully use the tinder fungus to reignite my fire and cook myself some lunch. I've now separated the cattails into shoots, rhizomes, and garbage. Uh, the shoots and rhizomes still need to be further processed and cleaned up in order to be ready to be cooked and or eaten. But I'm going to leave that for now. It's getting towards noon. I need to clean those fish and get some lunch in me. It's been about an hour and a half since I first lit the tinder fungus. And it's now burned down. It's uh, still got a little bit of life, but not very much left in it. Uh, like I said, I lit a, a, a pretty large surface area of it, and as a result, it burned more quickly than I would like. So I'm going to light another piece of tinder fungus, quite a large one this time, and I'm going to try and light it in a very small area so that it burns much more slowly. See that lit right in here. So that is a good sized piece. And it's lit in a fairly small area. I'm going to place it this way up. You can see it's smoking away just a little bit. And I'll leave and come back to that and uh, it should still be burning when I return from cleaning the fish. I've now returned to camp. The fire went out two and a half hours ago. I've preserved the fire using tinder fungus right here and this is smoking away nicely. Uh, this uh, essentially saves me the effort of building a friction fire. So now I already have my ember here. I don't have to uh, put the time and energy into getting the ember through friction. Now I simply skip to the tinder bundle stage. So I've made myself a tinder bundle out of dead leaves and ferns, just as I would if I was making a friction fire. At this point, 
I'm going to take the ember from the tinder fungus, just cut off a little piece, drop it into the divot that I've made in my tinder bundle as if it were a bird's nest. I'll blow the tinder bundle into fire, place it in my preset fire, and uh, I should be good to go. So let's see how it goes. There we have it. Nice little cook fire. Ready to go. Add bass and you have lunch. So this is the tinder fungus that I used. Uh, you can see where it's burned a chunk in there. And that took about an hour and a half to burn that much away. Now it was um, two and a half hours total. No, now, now it was three hours actually. So three hours total since I let the fire go out. Um, I had to transfer from a separate tinder fungus to keep the, uh, the ember going. Uh, the error with that first fungus was that it was small and also that I let too much of it uh, start to smolder and burn and it, uh, the surface area was too great and it burned away quickly. I started with a very small surface area here and this has burned in more slowly and it still has plenty of life left in this. So I'm going to extinguish this and save it for later, save it for another day. Nice comfy lay down on the rocks in the sun on a cool day. While Roy napped, our camp was visited by a family of ruffed grouse.
Well, that was fun. I just spent the last half hour or so stalking a family of grouse. I didn't think there were any grouse on this island. It's not a terribly large island, but uh, there you have it. There are at least three, a mother and at least two babies. I didn't see three, but they're pretty good at camouflaging, and I wouldn't be surprised if there were a few more in there. So I finished cleaning up the rhizomes. Uh, two steps are left. One is cutting them to length, and the second step is the all-important uh, cattail rhizome roast. Uh, it's now late afternoon and I haven't had a nap yet. Even though I had a relatively good sleep last night, which was five hours, um, I'm still going to make sure that I get down for a little bit of a nap. There are no guarantees that tonight will be a good night. Uh, we've had a north wind most of the day, but it's shifting a little bit. It came from the west and now it looks like it's uh, southwest, so I wouldn't be surprised if it ends up uh, becoming a, so a warm south wind and uh, we end up getting a lot of mosquitoes. So. I'm going to get a nap now, make sure I can get some sleep when I can. you got to be an opportunist on both food and sleep. Get it when you can because you never know when it's going to go scarce on you. I just woke up from a good hour-long nap and um, was surprised to find another grouse on the island. After seeing none here for the first month and a half, I've now seen four in one day. And this was a... Uh, the first three that I saw were clearly a mother and two two young ones. This one was a juvenile, so it was uh, it looked like an adult, but it was not adult size. So I know that there are at least four here, and uh, I'm thinking that they're probably coming around because of the blueberries. They're probably back in the island. There's a bit of a cedar swamp in there, and they're probably here now because they know that the blueberries will be ripening. What they don't know is that those blueberries are mine! Those are my blueberries! You can't have them! So I, uh, I asserted my presence, shall we say. And will do so again if needs be. You gotta protect what's yours. But, uh, it's calmed down now. Uh, Roy and I are gonna head out in the canoe, do our little walk, clean some fish, and come back for dinner and defend the blueberries as needed. evening and fingers crossed a night that is not too full of mosquitoes so here is the present state of the food storage container food and birch bark well stocked for birch bark very well stocked for cattail shoots no rhizomes. Got some of the uh, cow lily seeds. I think I'm just gonna end up bringing those back, doing a little bit of research into the proper way to cook them. Trying again at home. And then some cattail flowers, which are past their prime, but still edible. So the next thing to do, fill this compartment. Just approaching the end of day 49 now, that's seven weeks in the books. I mentioned earlier in the day that I was having trouble staying focused on the, uh, the remainder of the trip and I was thinking about the end of the trip a little bit too much. Um, I found that uh, when I was processing the cattails it uh, really kept my mind off it and kept my mind in the present. So uh, definitely the key there is just keeping busy, 
keeping my mind on something and uh, focusing on the here and now. I find when I have too much time to think, that's when it starts to wander and I start thinking about the end, which is just not productive. So, just gotta keep busy and uh, hammer out the last 10 days. I have just caught myself a nice walleye just outside the slot size. That's got to be like 60 and one half centimeters. So that is going to be my first walleye meal in quite a while. That'll be tomorrow. I am quite happy with the uh, catching that walleye for a number of reasons. First, it's a nice fish. It's uh, probably the second biggest walleye I've ever caught. Second, uh, it's a fish outside the slot size. It's been weeks since I caught one of those, a walleye outside the slot size that I can keep. It might even be over a month now. Uh, and they're a delicious fish, so I look forward to eating that. Third, it secures my food for tomorrow, my protein. I have one pike on the stringer, and now I have that walleye. So it'll be one fish for lunch, one fish for dinner, and I should be eating well. Any fish that I catch tomorrow are simply security and peace of mind for the next day. And last, but most definitely not least, uh, because it was a, uh, a purposeful discovery, and uh, I am not a walleye fisherman. I never have been. I've never really done the research. I've, I'm vaguely familiar with what, what to do. But uh, is this, this was not an accidental catch. This was me going out and actively trying to catch walleye, saying... Um, this spot at this time using this lure should give me a chance to catch this fish and it paid off and it's uh, it's very rewarding because I'm getting to know the fish I'm getting to know the lake getting to know the tackle and it was a, a purposeful discovery not a random catch and uh, anyone who has uh, taken up a skill or a new activity and uh, had to learn it themselves, not being mentored. This is the same sort of case as when I started hunting a few years ago. I have no hunting mentor, essentially. I have a, I have a few buddies that I've made it out for, I think, three hunts with in total. But otherwise, everything that I've done has been through trial and error, self-discovery. So uh, getting my first grouse was a very rewarding experience. Uh, getting my first ducks on my own, uh, I haven't shot a big game animal yet, but when I do, uh, if I do it by myself through my own research and training and trial and error process, I imagine that will be extremely rewarding. But yeah, basically just the, the, more, the more effort and the more independent research and, and, uh, and thought that goes into a, a catch like that, a new discovery, the more rewarding it is. So. I'm very happy with that fish and uh, I'm going to keep trying and if I can get a second fish then that's all the better.